what we, uh, before we tell you what's going on, we're going to have a couple of words from Madame Ethel, but actually, she doesn't know this, but yesterday we asked for some cards about um, International Women's Day. So throughout the day, we're going to have different people feed back to you. But honestly, do you know how many cards I got on this? Three. We asked you for how we can be bold about change for International Women's Day, and I got three cards. So there's some of these cards in your table. I know you're all busy, and it's not because nobody cares. It's because everybody's busy. But let's write some more down. Ethel, I'd like you to read the first one of these cards. Okay, I'll read it out loud. I want you to read it out. Here's the microphone. Can you um, decipher that handwriting? Oh, my goodness. He wants me to read this. Okay. <laughs> when possible, let women speak for themselves about their issues, successes, and challenges. Can I continue? You must. The messenger is the message. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you and good morning to everyone. I hope everyone had, is having a wonderful week and that we are all enjoying it and that we are all taking from this as much as we can. Um, we are going to have a very exciting day today again. We started the week thinking about the future. I hope we all remember since that Monday was a month ago after everything we have done this week. But we started thinking about 2050, what is the future going to look like? How do we help our clients in getting there? And how do we position ourselves into going into that world? And then we have several sessions about some of the issues that are going to change towards the future. We spoke about demographics. We spoke about cl conflict. We spoke about innovation and technology. We, we spoke about the role of diets and how they are going to change. We spoke about uh, uh, food systems in the future, etc. So the day today starts by thinking, how do we advance into thinking and working into that future, working with others? Because the future, we know it's complex. The future takes many of us to think together. And therefore, we have invited and we are very thankful to have with us colleagues from other global practices and CCSAs that have come to help us to think together. And to if we think together, then we can make our clients think together. And then hopefully we will be in much better position to reach that future in the way the future can be the best possible. So I'm very happy to introduce with us our four guests for this first session in the morning. And we have Michal Rukowski. I hope you all know him. Michael is a, a fantastic colleague. He uh, is the senior director for the social protection global practice and the job CCSA, two jobs, <laughs> and two important ones. And uh, uh, he will be with us in the morning. We also have here John Room. I hope you all know him. He is also the senior director for the climate change CCSA, work, he working very closely also with, with all of us. We have Andrew Davaland. Andrew, stand up. Here, he's the practice manager for the poverty global practice. Uh, global practice, we have a lot of things in common, and we can have many more in common moving forward. And finally, we have Clive Harris. Clive, my friend, where are you? There you are. Okay. And Clive is there, and Clive is the practice manager for the PPP, CCSA, another global practice where we think a lot uh, uh, on how we can work together. So. I hope that we will all find this session very interesting. It's going to be a completely different dynamic. I'm going to pass it to you now to introduce us to the morning, and we look forward to uh, um, uh, using and enjoying this last day of our, uh, our forum for agriculture in the best way possible. So thank you very much, and thank you all of you for coming. Thanks very much. Um, yes, a round of applause for Ethel. So it's hard to have something interactive in a room this size, but I know you're up for it because you're a game bunch. Um, and thank you all for uh, starting again on time. Um, I have to give the senior directors a little bit of heads up. We're actually serious about uh, um, timekeeping. So even if it's the end of my career at the World Bank, I may let you know when your time is up. What we are going to do is we're going to start. This is uh, speed dating is what it's called. And you're going to date for 15 minutes the senior directors from other practices. They're going to be stationed to start with in the four corners of the room. Then they will have 15 minutes to engage with you on a discussion about how we collaborate. They have some discussion, they have some questions to 
to have, and they're going to interact with you. Before that, each of them are going to give us two minutes of, of very quick uh, messages ahead of time. Every 15 minutes, we're going to ring the bell, and they are going to rotate once, the directors, not you. So every 15 minutes, you'll engage with a different director. I know this is complicated, but don't worry, it's not too bad. At the end of that hour, 15 minutes, you'll have seen each of those directors. They will then have five minutes to give us their key takeaways, and we'll wrap up. So it should be fun. Hopefully, really look to engage questions. This is the time. Please, of course, we don't have to tell you again, this is not the time to raise your human resource constraints or other issues. This is the strategic, collaborative, big thoughts. Um, the questions are more or less, they have some guiding questions, but it's about how we collaborate. So we need you to really participate. We're going to start with each director giving us two minutes, and I will time them, and <laughs> I'm sure they'll be absolutely fine. Sir, if you could give us two of your best. It's almost inhuman to have only two minutes. Good morning, everybody. I will be speaking fast and, try <laughs> and loud. Um, <laughs> if it's speed dating, what matters is what happens afterwards, right? Not during. <laughs> um, let, me, let me hit the key issues from the jobs agenda and maybe one from social safety net agenda, which is a part of the practice first. And there will be no surprises to you. Demographics is one. It has three dimension, per dimensions. First dimension, 85% of poor people live in rural areas and are related to agriculture. The second dimension of that is related to the fact that there are divergent trends uh, closer and closer to themselves in the world and they create migration pressures Mexico California uh, Eastern Europe Western Europe many countries vis-a-vis -vis Australia New, Ze New Zealand the third uh, is obviously aging in general but there is a very specific issue of aging of agricultural populations in country like China which poses challenges for the whole social protection and labor and jobs agenda, including old age security in the rural area, something not normally associated with low and middle income countries. Second trend is technological change. Here I just list reshoring, because reshoring means that there are, it's actually more difficult to get high productivity jobs in the countries that, that otherwise would have them. Um, the whole agenda of urbanization related to globalization and rural urban migration, here what we see from jobs agenda is good news for agriculture in the sense that very clear trend is towards cities that are less than a million uh, inhabitants and they spread. There is more and more deglomeration effect going on which means that it's closer from the farms or from rural areas to those cities and that creates opportunities to create good value chains in agriculture to improve on them uh, and this is very important, this is really uh, good news. Uh, I can't not mention something which is very fundamental for our work, both on the uh, job side and social protection side, which is replacing agricultural subsidies, food subsidies with social safety net. A lot needs to be done here, and we need to collaborate a lot better, but the issue is fundamental, and we do a lot of work. I am very grateful on behalf of both jobs and social safety net to geospatial data. Uh, we borrow from you geospatial data for better targeting on social safety net. Finally, the whole jobs agenda really brings us together in terms of trying to look uh, how the second generation, as we call it, of jobs project could look like. They need to be integrated. They need to look very carefully at urbanization aspects, at value chains in agriculture. And on an analytical front, I think we still have a lot uh, of work to do in measuring labor productivity. For us, labor productivity is a productivity per worker, which is a function of uh, land per worker and productivity of land. For you, it's yield. So we come from slightly different angles, what is the most important for us, but I think we need to do much more work because there are many myths which actually misconceptions about labor productivity worldwide. These are the main issues, the rest we do under the tables, around our tables. Thank you very much. And that is how it's done, ladies and gentlemen. Wow. And as we know, we've, there's been much discussion about livelihoods and jobs in this environment, so this will be very, uh, man, oh man, that was good. Now, gentlemen, this is, uh, can we walk you with this microphone to that corner to give us your two minutes, if you would not mind. Um, you can begin talking any time. Um, I, can I can say it in less than two minutes. Wow. Um, here's the reason. Um, you heard that, in fact, that whenever we look at poor people, seven out of ten poor people in a lot of poor countries live in rural areas. Not only do they live in rural areas, 
They happen to work in agriculture. And so there's one question that preoccupies us. That's why. What is, the, uh, what is underlying that, that outcome? Okay. Is it institutions? Is it technology? Is it information? Is it conflict? We don't know. We have some sense about how to do this, about how to answer those kinds of questions, but what would be really nice is to think very hard about the structures that actually get that outcome together with you guys, because that's something that we really, really preoccupy ourselves with in the poverty practice. The other thing that we really, really care about is basically, I that question implies one thing, which is what's your information base, right? What's the data that you have to be able to answer that question? And a lot of times, unfortunately, agricultural data statistics uh, is not the best and the most current. Uh, and so one of the areas that we try to improve uh, uh, doing business in, in, in the poverty practice is actually uh, collecting better household survey data mostly, but also agricultural census. So that's one area we, I hope we could, we could work on. So that's, that's the, the, the key thing that preoccupies us as it concerns you. Thank you. Very nice. Well done. <laughs> and well under time with excellent points. This is uh, going to go very well, isn't it? Now, Mr. Clive Harris. He's already over there. Can we give him a microphone just uh, so that we could? Clive, give us your best two minutes. Standards are high. If you just start talking, I think he'll mic you up. Okay, um, well, good morning, everyone. It's great to be here. And I'm going to uh, just maybe say two things, really quite simple. Um, first of all, I'd really like to make sure today that you, you all know who we are much better. I think we don't actually work uh, from the PPP CCSA with you very much. And I'd like to see what can we do more. And that's really the message I'll be delivering. Uh, we are a group that helps uh, bank clients and external clients think about how to involve the private sector in the delivery of services and the financing of services around infrastructure uh, mostly. And what I'd like to do is to explore what are the possibilities, how can we help you. Our department as it currently stands has a couple of special purpose vehicles in it, the Public Private Infrastructure Advisory Facility or PF and some of you may actually already be working with them. Global Infrastructure Facility, which is really for larger projects. And from July the 1st, we will be having the Financial Solutions Group, who do the World Bank guarantees being added to our department. So we have a possibility of looking all the way from policy to projects and to help you in the implementation of what you're doing. And I've got some stuff to give away as well, so uh, I'm looking <laughs> forward to doing that. So uh, that's all from my side and looking Good. forward to the conversations. Can you talk to the facilitator first if you're giving things away, please? Okay. Thank you. You can have some as well. Sorry, you heard that here. All right, thank you so much. That's, that's, I think, exactly the tone and tenor of what we're talking about today. Uh, Mr. John Room, if you could, uh, the Senior Director of Climate Change, if you could uh, wander over to that corner while giving us two of your finest from the Very Bonnie good. Isle. Okay, so great to see you, particularly many of you that I've worked before in Africa, East Asia, and South Asia. Great to be here. Um, I want to start with some, some some uh, facts and some alternative facts. So regardless of what our friend down the road in the White House says, climate change is real. Uh, Greenland is losing its ice cap. Antarctica, 67 degrees a couple of months ago. Uh, last 17 years have been the warmest on record. Last 17 months have been record months in terms of temperature increases. Records in a bad way. We all know from the analytics we did by 2030, unless we address climate change, we're going to have 100 million more people living in poverty. Agriculture has a critical role to play. We already have, and now this is where the facts get a little dicey, I'm sure you know them better than I do, about a billion people malnourished. World population is growing. We're going to hit 9 billion. We've got to feed those people. On average, if we don't do anything different, agricultural productivity could fall by 15 to 20 percent much higher in some areas with a change in geographic dispersal because of climate change. In addition, population is becoming more middle class. We know what happens is they eat more meat. That produces more methane, generally. So the question is, how do we move forward 
to deliver on this triple win that we're talking about? How do we increase production, reduce emissions, and improve adaptation at the same time and to get this in place with a different food system by the year 2050. That is the challenge, that is the opportunity that we have. We've got lots of small examples of how this might happen, and I'm sure we can all talk about the cows in India and stuff that we're doing on seeds in Senegal and all the rest of it. The question is, how do we get this to scale? If we don't address these issues in the agriculture sector, by 2050, agriculture will account for 70% of global emissions because energy would have come down. This will be a major part of the issue going forward. So focusing on 2050, trying to get the, um, uh, this triple win that we talk about. There's things that we can do in our own business. I'm going to talk about that much more. But we also need to get this agenda of agriculture much more firmly aligned into the COP discussions with the agriculture negotiators team has been making a great progress in terms of doing this, we can keep pushing in order to do this. Now, looking at our own programs, some of you may know, some of you might not know, we have a target to get to 28% of our lending in climate co-benefits with a very specific definition of what those climate co-benefits are by 2020. Unfortunately, across the bank group, we went from 21% to 18% to 20% FY17. We're not there yet. We're going to have to drive this through our entire work program. From an agriculture perspective, okay, uh, you had set yourselves a target of, of, of 25%. FY11 to, to 15, you were at 21%. FY16, 28%. FY17, 21%. How are you going to get this number up? How do we think through our program in order to move this forward? The other thing that was committed to on the part of the agriculture practice as part of our global action plan was to do 40 climate smart agriculture assessments and 40 climate smart infrastructure plans going forward. Hmm? Investment plans, sorry, yeah, investment plans going forward. Of those, the first category, the analytics piece, not doing too badly. 14 done, seven will be done by the end of the next fiscal year. 50%, pretty good. On the investment plans, I think two will be done by the end of next year. How do we accelerate this and how do we work together? So that's the opportunity, that's the challenge. Look forward to discussion. All right, so these senior directors have given us their time to come here. Oh, this I have a mic. Um, so let's, I, this, you're a great crowd, but let's cluster around. The closer you get, let's have an engaged conversation. Let's make it real and practical. Gentlemen, go to your corners. We've got 15 minutes before they rotate. I'll give you a five-minute warning. I'll get after five, after 10, and, and uh, let's go, please. It's you're starting now, so you'll just, you'll come over here. No, you're going to stand here. You know what, folks? Come on, you need to get closer than this. You need to shuffle your chairs. If some of you don't mind standing, you need to, this is a conversation. Get as close as you can, honestly. Get in here, and uh, this is going to be a great discussion, as you well know. That's it. Come in, come in. There's chairs over there. Get around. We need a discussion. That's it. Shuffle in there.